praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. This is Apostle Hopkins. Amen. We're looking forward, amen, to being with you guys this morning. Amen. It is a pure pleasure and an honor to be with you. And what I will be talking about this morning, amen, is how demons got in. Called cleansing your house starts with you. How demons got in. And I will be talking about cleansing your house starts with you. So what I am going to do is go on and jump on my PowerPoint and get kicking there right away so that we can share this. You all guys be blessed by it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to our screen share. There we go. Hallelujah. So we want to thank everybody for being on with us today. It is an honor and a pleasure to be with you guys. I thank the Lord that God has really stirred us to, amen, share this morning. I ask you to bear with us. God bless everyone, all of you guys on YouTube and other, other, other areas. We thank the Lord for you. So we will start sharing, amen, amen, on this message is how demons got in. Cleansing your house starts with you. So I'm going to share a few things here, guys, and I think it's going to be a real blessing to you. I'm working along with another stream right now. So in one shake, we will be together. Praise God. And we will share that with you guys. And we trust that the Lord really, really bless you all real good. There we go. I'm fully set up now. Thank you for coming on. Praise God. Amen. All right, let me get it. Now, first of all, I want to say this to you. The very beginning of, of anything operating in our house, amen, the question is, the first question is, how did the enemy get in? And what I'm going to share this morning is the basic principles, amen, of what I see. The first open door. Now, yes, I know we've been taught about generational strongholds, family line curses, all of that good stuff. But in this teaching this morning about how demons got in your house and it starts with you, let me show you what it says in Numbers chapter 23, verse 8. Amen. Now, the Bible says in number 3, 28, 23, verse 8 says, how shall I curse whom God have not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied. The first thing that the enemy has to do in order to curse our homes, and I'm talking about your physical house. The first thing he has to do, amen, is get any person, any believer, to actually open the door that will allow these spirits to gain access. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 25 and 26. By the way, students, y'all that are listening at me in this class, I'm going to say this to you right now. The statute of limitations has never been one that has ended on what God feels about serving other gods. What God feels about occult objects has never changed. I get tons of people who come to me for deliverance and then they wonder within themselves, well, how did this stronghold get in our home? How did our house get so bound up? And my dear friend, I'm trying to tell you this, that it may be a object or just a picture to you, but in the open door of the spirit, it can be something that gains access. Now, what are the qualifications that makes, glory be to God, an object in your house become an open door to demonic bondage? All right, I'm going to name a few. Number one, when any picture, object, symbol, cross, tattoo is used as worship to a deity is used as your protection, your God, your lucky charm. It can open the door to bondage. That's number one. All right. Number two, what opens the doors to demonic strongholds in your house becoming a problem? When it becomes even pictures of dead relatives. Now, hear what I'm saying. It is nothing wrong with having a picture of grandmama or mom that passed away. But it can become a problem when that picture becomes a shrine. When that picture becomes something that you have to pray to or talk to constantly, that is an open door to strongholds. Not just because you have a picture of a dead relative, but when you start talking to that relative as if that person has taken the place of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible said there is one mediator between God and man, which is Jesus Christ the righteous. If, uh, if uh, Evelyn was to die and I started looking for Evelyn is watching over me. Evelyn is up there. She's praying for me. Oh, Evelyn, Evelyn is doing this. Evelyn is doing that. I have changed from a husband that has had a wife 
best way that I love and would miss dearly. And thank God my wife, Evelyn, is still alive. I have to make sure of this because someone can hear one snippet and run with something. My wife, Evelyn, is alive and well. Matter of fact, she's working downstairs in her section of the office, office monitoring this teaching. But if Evelyn was to die, I will go through a grieving process and I will let the grief take its place. The how long? I don't know. But I do know this much. If I will hold on to the grief, start talking to Evelyn as if she's still alive in, that, in our house, I can open the door to a familiar spirit. So that is another way that you can cause demons to come into your house. Evelyn and I, two things I want to share, and I will never forget this. Evelyn and I was in Hampton, Virginia. I think I've shared this in other teachers, and we'll probably share it again. While we went to Hampton, Virginia, we was at a hotel. The hotel that we stopped at, a uh, particular place ministry that we were visiting, actually just put us up at that hotel. So pretty much, it wasn't some place that we went and paid for ourselves. But Evelyn and I always tried to be, um, uh, try to be respectful at the budget that a person has. We don't try to act like we're all that in a bag of chips, but let me tell you what happened. When I walked in the door of the hotel, over top of the seal of the door was a, a Pacific God. It was a Pacific God. When I got in the lobby, there was another object, an image of another God, okay? It was a deity that I recognized that was of an occult nature. That night, when Evelyn and I were sleeping in the bed, uh, all of a sudden, I wake up and a young girl pushing a baby carriage, looks like about the 17th or 16th, 16th or 17th century. She was dressed like that. The little girl walked past uh, both the beds. So me and Evelyn at that time chose to sleep in, in two double beds side by side. This girl walked past Evelyn's foot of the bed and walked past mine. I sat up and looked at her just like I would look at you if you walked in my bed, uh, uh, hotel room and said, Brother Ivory, can I use the bathroom? That girl walked into that room. Hey, the, how you doing, Bishop Ligators? Hey, son. Man, I love you, boy. I love you, man. Praise God. So anyway, as, they, uh, as, as that spirit walked by, I took and looked at it and I said, wow. And I laid back down. I took authority. I said, the name of Jesus, I just bind this. And I went back to sleep. When I woke up that morning, I was getting dressed. Evelyn turns around and says to me, she said, baby. I said, what, hon? She said, did you see that little girl walk by pushing that baby carriage in this room? I said, you saw it? Evelyn described it exactly the way it looked. Now, the reason why that spirit was able to walk that hotel room and walk that ground was because the owners and some other things had happened on that property and it left a portal open. It left a demonic spiritual portal open. Now we could really get to talking. It was a familiar spirit. It was a demonic stronghold. But I believe the reason why it was able to operate there was because of the spiritual contamination of the objects that was on the property. Spiritual contaminations can happen in several ways. One, spiritual contamination can happen by murders, violent things happening in a property, in a home, on your land. Spiritual contamination can take place through rituals being done, demonic things being planted. And oh, please, I got to say this. Please, in Jesus' name, let me say this. Don't none of y'all listening at me come going, well, Brother Ivory, uh, praise God, I had an aunt and she buried something in the backyard. Do you own the land now? Well, yeah, Brother Ivory. Then take authority on it. Tread that bad boy. Your Bible says you shall tread upon serpents and those scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Break those strongholds. And you don't need to call Brother Ivory to do it. You don't need to call your preacher to get it done. All you need is to call on the name of the Lord and the just lives by their faith. And you are a believer. You have that same self-same authority. It's everybody follow me. Now, because people be calling me, can I talk to y'all this morning? Sometimes people be calling me for deliverance and other people who know them get upset like, you, you called him and he prayed? Well, yes, you called me. If you sign up and pay for a deliverance session, I'm going to minister to you. But my goal is 
to get you to the place till you're able to help yourself so that you ain't got to say some preacher used it. Because as the church of the living God, you have power. Good God Almighty. Now let me go on. So moving on past that, the reason why I felt that, and me and Evelyn knew that, that door had been opened was because of the activity of the occult objects and idol on that land. Let me share another one Evelyn and I went through. Evelyn and I was, well, Evelyn was driving at first. We were in the area, I think it was New Mexico. I wish baby was here, whip sat beside me. We were, I think it was New Mexico. But regardless what it, where it was, it was in the Southwest. As we were traveling, all of a sudden, we hit a portal. When we hit this particular portal, this area, I think it was Sedona. I think it was Sedona, actually. Well, wherever it was, this area was known for New Age occult practices. It was known for that type, type of problem. Thank you, sweetheart. Evelyn said, yes, it was, New Mexico. Thank you, baby. I've seen you on the screen. Well, we was in New Mexico. A portal opened up. Now, y'all are going to, this is going to blow y'all's mind. When this portal opened, we were driving our white van. Everything went in slow motion for about, I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes time suspended. We were actually both of us looking at each other and everything was moving like, if you can see my hand here, everything was moving like this. It was moving as if we were in some type of place. And I started praying and commanded it to break. And then all of a sudden the car, the atmosphere, the place, everything went boom back to normal. This actually happened. With Evelyn and I have had some amazing uh, supernatural manifestations where God was present. Now with some of you, that would happen to you and you swear to goodness that the devil's in charge and the demons got me. It wasn't nothing but a spiritual thing. And we did nothing but shake it off of our back. Amen. And kept on stepping. Now, let me look at this at Deuteronomy 7, 25 and 26. Deuteronomy 7, chapter 7 verse 25 and 26, it says, the images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Why did the Lord want them to burn the images with fire? Now, with most of us, we will holler, well, you got no business. That's their, that's their objects. That's their culture. God was not trying to destroy their culture. He was trying to destroy their demonic access. The images of their gods, small g-o-d, that word there is dealing with small fallen ones, demonic powers. He said, their images. Why did God want them to destroy their false Iman Odell, false image of a God? He wanted them destroyed because they would open up doors for demonic spirits to activate and access in, their, in the natural realm. The images of the God shall you burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or the gold that is in them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Notice it says, if you take in their images, if you take in their silver and gold, and it was talking about the silver and gold that overlaid them. Let's not get ridiculous. It wasn't talking about, oh, we found a gold nugget. Now we got to quite burn it up. Please give me a break. Why do I answer stuff like this? Because I get all kinds of inboxes with people trying to hold on to their demonic bondage. They're trying to hold on to their idol worship. Listen to me. I am totally 100%, 1 million percent against the occult practices. The occult has no business being in church or in your life. Boom. Said it. Moving on. Listen, it says, don't take them in nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord God. Why is it an abomination? It is a loathsome abomination to God because it is something that is counterfeiting the nature, spirit, and creativity of God. These other gods, these things you are wearing, putting up in your house, tattooing on your body, you, uh, these things were attributed to the fallen ones. Listen to this. I'm going to say this. Some of y'all wearing yourself half that but the mark of the beast. Been wearing the beast's mark for years. I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all been sitting around. Yeah, we done. Some of us. I'm going to include all of us. Some of us been sitting around talking about, oh, the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast is there. And here we do. We get stuff that is dedicated to idols. 
images that belong to other gods, stuff that are, are part of altars and rituals, put them up in our house, but yet we're looking for 666. Buddy, your problem ain't 666. Your problem is what you got right now, now, now. Now, verse 23. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly attest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. I once had a person staying with me. I'm not going to name who, because I have many people that have lived with us before. So I'm not going to go there. But I had a person staying with me one time that I told them, I said, you know what? I said, uh, this, a lot of this stuff that you got, this, this, this new age bondage that you got, that you're not bringing it up in my house. We, we, we're not doing all of that. And I'm trying to be nice here because it's a family member. And I love my family just like you love yours. But I had to tell them, look, now, why did I talk to them like this? Glad you asked. I could feel an, an contamination, a spiritual contamination in my house. Right now, I am at a place where no one lives at our house but me and Evelyn. And you know what, guys? No offense. I like that. Not because I'm upset because people stay with me. I like that because I don't have to deal with the demons that you've allowed in your life. I don't have to deal with the demons you wear around your neck, the ones that you put on, some, on somewhere and talk to. I don't have to deal with your elemental spirits. I don't have to deal with your crystals and all that kind of stuff. I don't have to deal with voodoo or witchcraft. I'm not just naming one thing. Are you hearing me? Sometimes you have people in your house that are there and it's a situation that you say, well, suppose someone comes by the hybrid and they're in our house and right now we got to have them. Take authority over any spiritual activity that comes in with them. Did you hear what I said? No, you ain't got to go, well, ah, they're in my house now. I hate it when believers act like they have no power. Look at me. I hate it when the church acts like it has no power. I despise it. When that type of situation happens, Someone comes in your house, they may be grown or old. Got that? You can, it's a little different. You can do more with someone young than you can with somebody old. But nonetheless, sometimes there are situations that that the fertile assault means telling them, just get it out. Sometimes you're dealing with a situation where you bind the demonic activity that operates in their life from affecting your environment. Are you hearing me? The Lord will give you wisdom. There's a time to bind and take authority. And there's a time to kick out and say, I'm done. Hallelujah. So, but in your house, the reason why in our homes, many times we have spiritual problems is because of the doors we open. There, don't kid yourself. These idols were seen as gods. I'm going to say it again. Do not kid yourself. These are the idols were seen as gods. The word teraphim, that, that little picture you see right there, that is an ancient teraphim. I'm going to tell y'all something right now. There are people who, are, who to this day have bought artifacts for the express reason so that they can continue worshiping the teraphims of those days. The teraphims were regarded as early times as representatives of real gods endowed with divine attributes. Got that? In Genesis 31, 19 through 20, where Laban was rebuking Jacob for Rachel's theft of the teraphim, asked, wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? Are you getting that? Laban gets mad, chases J uh, Laban gets mad, chases Jacob, goes after his daughters. He don't know where his household gods went. Listen, the, the demons have always tried to get in the house. They don't want to just get in your head. They want to get in your house. They want to get on your label. They want, to, they want you to wear, they want you to wear them as a t-shirt. They want you to hang them in your ear, tattoo them on your body. I'm not playing this morning. And what happens, they're doing it because they desire to operate and have their power moving through you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me go on a little bit further. Next one. So this is a teraphim. And he asks, wherefore hast thou solely by God's? Listen, Abraham, when God told Abraham, come out from among your father's house, God was saying to Abraham, your fathers served other gods. I am the one and the true living God. I am Elohim. I am that I am. Leave from out from under your father's eyes. I will be your God and ye will be my people. And it's still the same now. And some of us in this new generation, 
we are being hoodwinked and bamboozled. Look, my, my son in the gospel, Bishop Ligators, he could kick this thing off and really go that with you. Because these things from Nimrod to Timbuktu, these things from, from Babylon right on into Babylon, the, the, the beginning, and Babylon, the mystery of horror of hell now, that brother knows how these spirits have intermingled in society, intermingled in the government, intermingled in the lives of men and women, and we are bound by demons, and many don't even know it. Let me go on to the next frame. Deuteronomy 32, 17 through 18 said, I'll quote images in your house opens doors to demons. And here goes what it said. They sacrifice unto devils. Are y'all hearing me? <coughs> they sacrifice unto devils and not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came up newly up whom your fathers feared not. Now I'm going to say this to this, this young generation today. Yeah, the church got a whole lot of problems. The church, some people in the church by not living the word has given church a bad name, has given Christ a bad name, has given Christianity a bad name. But I maintain to tell you, that don't change what God says in the word. Those, those other religions are serving devils. They're opening the door to them. Yes, I said it. I know I'm going to get some of y'all mad, including my family. Some will get mad. But guess what? I'm not going to back off from saying what the word of God says. Deuteronomy 32, 18 says, they sacrifice unto devils, and this was planned by the Nephilim. This was planned by the fallen ones. They were the first ones to introduce to mankind sorcery and witchcraft. They sacrifice unto devils and not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Y'all, you see this verse right here? This is why many, I'm going to say it right now, Many of the young people that I knew who once knew God, who, who grew up learning about the things of God, many of them have gone in the new age because they're deceived. They have been demonically duped and deceived. Many of your fathers and your mothers were prophets, vandals, and teachers, and pastors, and you have been sucked in by the enemy, and now you're operating under the new age spirits out there, and you're getting loaded with demons. I said it. You're getting loaded with demons. Verse 18, 32, 18 says, they say uh, unto the rock that begot them, thou art unmindful. In other words, the rock is Jesus. The rock is the foundation of God. They are, became unminded and they forgotten God that formed them. Once they knew him as God, once they once walked and understood him as God, I'm talking to some of you backslidden, new age, young people out there and old people out there who now you're in all this new mess getting bound up as you can be, and being happy about it, never realizing you are totally deceived. And I'm going to kill another thing. I ain't talking about no white man's religion. I'm talking about the one that God the Father stirred up, and they got nothing to do with white men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am talking about the power of God, our Redeemer, and our Lord, who brought Yeshua for the salvation of the whole world, who gave Yeshua HaMashiach, who gave Jesus our Redeemer for salvation. And I'm not talking about some kind of white gospel or some kind of black gospel. I'm talking about the power of God, the kingdom of God, and the access to the throne room of God. Many of them have forgotten the rock that begot thee, and thou art unmindful, and thou hast forgotten God that formed thee. And let me tell y'all what happens when this went on. When what the enemy is doing to some of our family members and doing to our children is loading them with demons because they said, those demons said, I can't beat you, so I will try to get your children, your family, your grandchildren to serve me. That's exactly what those demons are doing. Look what it says in Romans 1.25. Now, how did they get them to do this? They changed the truth of God into a lie. They had to change the truth of God's word into a lie and worship and serve the creature or the created thing more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Ain't no way in the world that a stone, a rock, or burning sage or, or wearing an amulet around my neck is going to protect me. Ain't no way in the world that I'm going to replace God Almighty then I'm going, to, I'm going to replace Joshua with some type of object. But what happened was he got many of us. Reason why you got demons in your home? Reason, those demons have been tracking down behind you because it was trying to bring you to a place, Romans 125, that where you will change the truth of God into a lie and you will worship and serve the creature more than the creator 
who is blessed forevermore. Isn't it amazing? There's some people that, that actually would have more honor towards a cat than they would to a redeemer. Romans 1.25 in a new international version says, they changed the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is, who is forever praised. Now, what is a created thing? Isn't a crystal a created thing? Isn't sage a created thing? Isn't statues, I don't care if it's statues of Murray and Joseph, I mean, God ain't never told me to serve them. Those are created things. So man forms something with his hands carves something out of a rock, and all of a sudden, the stars, the moon, uh, the rock, the crystal, the whatever is God. Let me tell you what the Bible says. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is not a stone. He's not a rock. He don't need your crystal. He don't need your astrological signs. He don't need, God don't need no help. He's God all by himself. I'm going to preach it. I said it and I stand on it, not back it up an inch. Good morning, everybody. Next thing. Clear biblical truth is what's needed to inform the people of the danger of opening doors to demons that attack your house. In Exodus 1 through 5, God condemns the worship of idols and the creation. Deuteronomy 32, 5 to 17 says, have corrupted themselves and have worshiped devils or demons. Joshua 6.18, those who keep our own cursed objects are cursed. You wonder why stuff is not working right? You're cursed. Proverbs 3.33 says, the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. Jeremiah 48.10, deceitful workers of the Lord is cursed. Doing the work of the Lord deceitful is cursed. So if you're a hypocrite and preacher, a hustling prophet, a perverted whore minister, you cursed. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And, yeah, and that's what must be applied. Christ. Blotting out your sins, Colossians 2.14 and 15, said he blotted out the ordinance that were against us. Revelation 12.11 said, we overcame by the word of our testimony. And the Bible said in 22, Revelation 22.3, there's coming a time where there'll be no more curses. I read these verses to just give you just a slight indication that glory be to God, that God wants all the worship. I'm going to tell y'all straight up. God the Father wants all the worship, period. Some people that come, I mean, not all of you, thank God for y'all, but, but there are some people I had to tell point like, I'm not the one for what you want. Because what you want is a conjurement. You, you don't want, because me, I'm going to lead you to Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to lead you to Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Moving right on. Should houses be cleaned of evil spirits? Look what it says here. Acts chapter 19, 19 through 21. The early church got rid of their old occult books and such. The modern church makes excuses for them. Yeah, I said it. Boom. Booyah. The early church got rid of its occult books. Got rid of its witchcraft. The modern day church wants to hire a witch, psychic, or warlock as a part of its staff. Some of them, their prophets ain't nothing but warlocks and witches. I said that too. Moving on, Acts 19, 19. Many of them also, which use curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of it them to be 50,000 pieces of silver. And it says even further, in verse 18, it says, many that believe. What is wrong with some of you that believe? How come some of you that believe and still fooling with occult objects? How come some of you saying, I accept Jesus as Lord, that if his Lord, doggone it, make him Lord. If he is Lord, make him Lord. Yeah, I said it. If his Lord, then you draw the land to sign, choose this day who you're going to serve. Now, bottom line is this, I'm going to tell y'all right now, you ain't going to get a whole lot of likes, a whole lot of uh, hits on this. I'm not trying to trend. I'm trying to end. I'm trying to end it well in Christ. I'm trying to preach the truth so that, so that one day that this generation that hears this message, many will get saved and come out of your witchcraft, come out of your occultism, come out of your psychic, come out of all that you're doing because it's bondage, it's demonic, and it's sin. Many of them also, which use curious arts, brought the books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the pieces, price of it, found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And look what it says. So mighty they grew the word of God and prevailed. I'm going to tell you all right now, mixing the occult hinders the word of God from growing in you. Boom, I said it. 
Some of us, the reason why you're not reaching the place, because you got two altars in your heart and no man can serve two masters. You're either going to choose one or choose the other. Bottom line, listen to me. These demons, I'm going to say this to you straight up. The reason why these demons want your children, grandchildren, and family to come under a cult, new age bondage, not know the Lord from a lizard, so that it, they can put those spirits in them and stop them from becoming who God prophetically set them out to be. The enemy wants to steal the gift, the grace, and the abilities that belong to God. And I'm going to say it again. Yes, some of us preachers with our ragged lifestyle, some of us church folk with our twisted mess has caused some people to not want to stay with God. But I maintain to tell you, God is going to deliver and save those that call upon his name. But mixing the occult hinders the word of God from growing in you. Modern day occult books and materials are contacting the same demons from the past. There is no statute of limitation. I'm going to say it one more time. Modern day occult books and materials are attracting and contacting the same demons from the past. There is no statute of limitation. Who told y'all this? Who told y'all that there was a statute of limitation? Moving on to the next frame. Books and objects identified with anything related to Satan's kingdom have been known to attract demons. And here goes what some people pull in the house. Angel cards are no different than tarot cards. All divination and all occult. I never get so I mean, what, how do Christians get like that? You know, you can bring any stupid thing to some of us believers and we will join up in it. Tarot cards are, and angel cards are no different. Laying cards for people's destiny is from an occult background. You're looking, when a tarot card is laid, it's looking for the direction of the spirits associated with it to give an answer to a person's life. When angel cards are laid, it's doing the same thing. And God told us not to worship angels anyway. Matter of fact, in one scripture, I think, I don't, I don't know whether it was Gabriel or Daniel, or uh, one of the angels told the servant of the Lord, get up, I'm your fellow servant. Don't worship me. But well, here we go, angel worship. Now, look, some Christian right now, uh -oh, but, but apostle so-and-so, bishop so-and-so, and our ministry, we do that. Y'all bound. Y'all bishop bound, you bound, y'all are bound. Because you're, you're, what you're doing is putting halos on the occult doesn't change anything. Meaning, hey, God bless you, Apostle Kevin. How you doing, brother? Fart up this morning, boy. Fart up. Putting halos on tarot card, calling it angels, don't change the fact. Listen, why you need the angels to answer for you when you got the Holy Ghost? What made you switch from the Holy Ghost speaking and leading your life to now angels? You deceived. You're hoodwinked, you're bamboozled. That's why next. Job 21, 17 says, how often is the candle of the wicked polite and how often come their destruction upon them? God distributed sorrow in his anger. How often is the candle of the wicked put out? Lord, every evil wicked candle lit. That's why you trying to light it on me. Put it out, Father, because, Lord God, you have made me a candle, which means I got the light of the gospel inside of me, and I am not here. I'm shouting from the rooftop. I'm using every avenue, and then I'm going home with the Lord. But look at this wicked mess here. Wicked, wicker book of candle spells. That's what some book goes after. Reversing candle. This is a voodoo priestess fixed reversal candle. So whatever's going on, you reverse it back. Even got the third eye of Horus on the bottom. See that red down the bottom? That red one right there? That's the third eye of Horus. Got that? This other candle over here is Belphamath and Lilith candle. And some of these people, some of you and some of your family going on the internet fooling with this garbage. Be a moth, Lilith, money, black, magic, ritual candle. Spirit, uh, it comes from a spiritualist manifestation. Also, seven-day pull-out candle. Or the mother of sabbatic goat. Are you understanding me? What's crap? Well, here goes the amazing thing. That goat, that goat that you're talking about is no, nothing different than one of the fallen angels. Called, it was even called the scapegoat. That's a whole nother story. But all of that is coming from the ancient antiquities. It is a repeat of the ancient antiquities. These spells they're using are the spells that were taught 
and went from generation to generation where that the fallen ones have done. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That spirit, come on, I'm moving right along. God, I'm fired up this morning. Next, there's something called contagious magic. Magic based on the relationship and contact of a person to influence them with objects. Now, contagious magic is what some folk do when they put witchcraft on somebody to have them tomorrow. Contagious magic, amen, is where someone wants to control an individual or a group of people, amen. And you know what? I break in Jesus' name. I will not be controlled. I will surrender to the Holy Ghost, but I will not be controlled by nobody's witchcraft and magic. I'm like Teflon in the spirit. Sorry, you ain't nothing going to stick. Contagious magic. Magic based on relationship and contact of persons to influence them with objects, performing rights over their hair, fingernails, and personal belongings to curse the person. So you, Y'all, I, 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 I have had people that have had underwear stolen, hair clipping stolen. Now, here we go. Somebody, but Brother Ivory, somebody has taken my, my, my fingernails. Well, in Jesus' name, take authority over and ask the Father to counsel out everything done. You ain't got to freak out. Look, all of this stuff I know, none of it makes me freak out in fear. Because greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Are you hearing me? I break all contagious magic. I break and take authority over anything anything being used against me. And I ain't got to call 11 preachers and 20 prophets. I stand and I take authority myself because I have Christ. I'm seated in heavenly places with them far above all principalities and power. And no person on the earth is going to get a piece of fingernail, a piece of hair. I'm not bald headed as I am. They'd have to search pretty hard anyway, wouldn't they? My, but the bottom line, I'm just kidding right here, right now. I ain't scared. The next one is Channing to repeat symbol, uh, syllables or words in a monotone to conjure up and make contact with the spirit word or idol, or, or idol gods. I'm gonna say it again, chanting to repeat syllables or words in a monotone to conjure up and make contact with the spirit world or idol gods. Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone listening at me right now, if you have had little chanting in your ear, Ain't nothing to freak out or get worried about. We take a thought. I bind it. I shut it down. I silence it. Scatter the words, oh God. Pull down their intention. Lord God, in Jesus' name, you said no weapon formed against me shall so prosper. You even said that every tongue that rises up against me, I, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. So, Father, all chanting being done, all incantation being done, let them fall to the ground. Let them come to nothing. I fear not. I have no respect for your witchcraft. No respect for your evil altars. No fear of your magic. Boom, here I stand. Here I sit in Christ's name. Fear fearlessly. Fearlessly. The next one is crystals. A new age belief that gems or stones possess magical, esoteric, supernatural power or energy to bring the person health, wealth, and good luck. So now all of a sudden, Jesus dies on the cross, but praise God, he got to have a crystal. Give me a break. What you're dealing with, amen, is elemental spirits. You're using the crystal becomes a point of contact for demonic powers to enter in. I deal with this every day. I've had people every week where we have had to command strongholds to loose them and let them go by the power of almighty God. Father, we give you praise. The next one is crystal mency. Crystal mency is divination by using crystals, even causing a type of hypnosis to see visions in crystals. That's crystal mency. Amen, say it again. Crystal mency is divination by using crystals, even causing a type of hypnosis or, or to see visions. So, so this what this does is it, it, it is affecting these individuals. It is affecting their life. Bear with me. 83, gotcha. Pulling up my, there we go. We back. It is affecting and opening doors to these spirits. So divination by using crystals. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People of God, I say to you, amen, that somebody got to tell the truth. Next, next frame. Diva or goddess. Now, I know I'm going to lose a couple sisters on this, but you know what? You'll be good. Diva or goddess. 
Usually this is a woman who refers to herself as one to be worshipped. I will worship no woman. And guess what? Sister girl or whoever you are, I don't care what your color is. I ain't seen a woman yet, not even my own wife, that is worth me worshiping. I will love Evelyn. I will, I will honor Evelyn. I will treat her with the deepest respect. But you're no goddess, Sonny. You're, you're just a woman. You're, 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 you're the good thing to me. But by no means am I going to get all bound up and think, glory be to God, that this spirit is going to have me honoring some demon. Hallelujah. Many Christian women today, hallelujah, many Christian women today, hallelujah, bear with me, folks. I'm working with my system in here. How you go? Many Christian women today are calling themselves divas and see themselves as goddesses in their various fields, music, modeling, and gospel. Sister, you're no goddess. Let me help you. You are a believer at best, but you're no goddess. Yeah, you, you, you even might be cute, but I'm not impressed. John 4 and 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. I don't see any woman as a goddess. None of you. God bless you. I'm not interested. The word goddess, the belief that divine, that the divine is feminine or that there are female deities or that all women are divine and they are goddesses. That is not biblical. Boom. God is a spirit. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. I will tell you the truth when you get right down to it. Amen. There are terms that God uses of the operation of his spirit that does have feminine, uh, feminine characteristics. Like the word wisdom is Sophia. But that doesn't mean wisdom is a lady. We call God the father. But in reality, God is a spirit. Bottom line. I mean, at the end of the day, glory be to God. Hallelujah. We need to be very careful of letting Nimrod's mama, Semiramis, and the worship of Nimrod's mama, Semiramis, who became the mother goddess, and to carry on through other. Semiramis is Diana. She is a, a Vishnu, a different name by the same devil. Are you hearing me? And when you call yourself a diva or a goddess, you are proclaiming yourself a god. And that's not what God called you. But I'm going to move on past that. And yes, I stand to offend a few people. Oh, they're going to counsel me. Oh, I'm really worried. Moving right along. Kundalini. It means serpent power. That is unleashed in the lives of a person that practice Middle Eastern religious martial arts, yoga, and other occult forms. And I'm not talking about the exercise of martial arts. I am not talking about just the exercise. I'm talking about the part where you are asking something to come through the chakras of your body that is of an occult nature. And I minister to people weekly and monthly who has opened the door in these areas of Kundalini. That's a whole nother sermon, a whole nother teaching. Amen. All right. Also, magic money. This is another one. Magic money. That's sorcery by farmers and spells spoken or chanted over money to bring increase or destruction. To cast spells over money to bring a desired in by controlling the outcome. When I was ministering uh, uh, as, a, as a prayer partner and co a confidant for a CEO, a multimillionaire out of the Atlanta area, this brother was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. In some of the business contracts that we were praying over, there were straight, straight up Santorian curses being sent against those businesses. There were more than one time when we were dealing with his entrepreneurial businesses, some of the contracts were being affected by people that were going to conjurement, going to root workers, going to Santeria or voodoo to make the contract work. And for it, with this fellow through praying, him and I praying and other intercessors, because it, it was a couple of us, we literally prayed down witchcraft so that the one that God really wanted to have that bill or have that particular contract would have it. We don't, we don't, look, our prayers is not something to control that make things happen just the way we want. We pray the will of God. 
But honey, in no ways in the world that during or should you sit down and let yourself be overran by someone praying sorcery over finances, control and manipulation to bind you in the area of raises, bind you in the area of finances. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All money magic is used to curse finances and cause whatever comes in contact with it, the coins and dollar bills. So what you do, you brick curses over finances in Jesus' name. Now watch somebody get on smile. I ain't, well, you gonna do that with the money you got in your wallet? Sweetheart, the time that money even intended to come in my hand, it's blessed. Are you hearing me what I'm saying to you? God is the one that gives me promotion. Amen. Go, are you understand what, is what I'm saying to you? If there be any promotion, if there be any raise, if there be any success, I give it to God. I don't give it to the crystals. I don't give it to the to the, the, the moon. I don't give it to the sun. It's God in Yeshua's name. I thank you for every blessing you've given me. Matter of fact, God, I thank you that every attack that the enemy sent against me, you rise up on my behalf. I thank you. And I give you praise. And then there's potion magic. That's the use of liquids, oils, and potion used to curse cast spells. A person may even wear certain oils or fragrances to lure the person to them. Also put certain powders in food to work magic on individuals. Y'all know this is the truth. We take authority over any liquids, oils, or potion that's been cast. Father, as anyone that is listening to me now, right where they're sitting at YouTube or ivoryhopkinsvimeo.com or even sitting here on Facebook, in the name of Jesus, I command every devil that been activated by liquids, fluids, water, oils, potions, I break those spells and I command them to loose God's people and let them go. Father God, anyone that is wearing types of oil and fragrances to seduce, to pervert, and bring someone under sexual magic, I break the power of that effect. Lord God, any man, woman, or child that have been, that witchcraft has been used to bind them so that they can be controlled and under manipulation, or even somebody using witchcraft to make somebody marry them, I break your power, your works fall to the ground, and made the demonic waters that you even deal with dry up. In the name of Jesus, I oppose aggressively witchcraft. I come against it aggressively and will do it with my last dying breath. Are y'all hearing me? And I'm not backing up. Next, the third eye, the realm of the psychic power by which a person sees illegally in the spirit realm. Sometimes called the eye, all seeing eye of Horus or Ra. Going back to the Egyptian gods. Now God judged them in the book of Exodus God judged the Egyptian gods. He judged the God of the waters. He judged each one of those 10 plagues was against different gods that Egypt served. This eye can be seen in many pictures as an eye in the center of the forehead of an individual called, called, the, right, called the third eye. Some people often tattoo an eye on their forehead or the back of their head. The third eye is also referred as the sixth sense or extra sensory perception. I got the Holy Ghost, ain't got no third eye. Out of my belly flows rivers of living water. But you see people, we're playing with stuff. And someone like me, when I bring it up now, I got, listen, let me help y'all. I am not worried about pleasing people. So get mad. I am not worried about some occult getting upset because I'm telling the truth. Not worried about it. Just going to teach the truth. They teach their stuff, don't they? If you're going to bring it, I'm going to bring it too. If you're going to teach yours, I'm going to teach mine too. Moving right along. Hallelujah. Now, how demons get in, cleansing your house of demons. In other words, my dear friend, we want to thank you, amen, for being a part of this teaching. We praise the Lord for you. Amen. It's been such a blessing. Hallelujah. It's been such a blessing sharing this word with you. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, listen, if you want to, you can if you want to, amen. Anyone, if you've been blessed by this, you see our cash app, General Ivory Hopkins, why don't you sow a $5 seed? Now, if you don't have it or don't feel led, it's all cool. Please enjoy the message. I'm going to say it again. If you would like, if you've been blessed by this message and would like to sow a $5 seed to what we're doing, feel free to do so. If you don't feel led to do so, just enjoy the teaching. If you don't like what I taught, okay, 
See, we ain't falling out. Love you. At the end of the day, I want you all to remember one thing. I want you to remember that God, he is. He's watching. Good day. Have a good one. Bye-bye, guys. I'm out.